Hey everybody, it's Mike with MonkeyFab. Thanks for dropping in and checking out another video. So the, this video here, we're gonna go over some uh, bolts, you know, just make sure I got everything tight and this project is one of those ones that's been in and out of the garage a few times and has uh, spanned a, uh, a miraculous year and a half. So I wanted to make sure that uh, everything's tight. So we're gonna tighten some bolts and then we're gonna go ahead and fix the power steering pump and uh, get it sorted. So, uh, Stay tuned, watch the video. Okay, so we got that guy in there in this little happy home. Now, on the back side of this can, there's a tube that's, that's open. I wasn't really sure what was going on with it, but I need to either, um, I need to either crimp it really well. What I wanna do is crimp it, clean it, and then weld it. So I don't have to worry about leaking. And I don't have bolts on this thing anyway, so it doesn't look like it was meant to be permanent. So we'll pull that out and take a look at that. And you know, I'm down here. I'm gonna check the water pump bolts to see. <laughs> yep. Okay. Like I said, I just need to know what did I what did I in fact do on this car. Engine and transmission bolts, real quick. All right, like I said, I thought that I. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh. Check you, sir. Oh. Okay, thank you. Ooh, let's, let's tighten you up a little bit more, okay, buddy. Ow, okay, yeah, that'll work. What about you? Are you on like you meant to be? to keep doing is keep tightening bolts that I thought were tight and keep saying, oh, I'm pretty sure I already tightened this. There's nothing we can still pop it up like that. Those are 18. I'm pretty sure I already tightened this. Wait a minute. engine our engine is secure so let's drop it down and we will take this power steering pump out and modify it does that sound like a plan Boom! 
Boom. So I ordered the LS3 June Performance Spark Plug wires and they don't work because they are about, it looks like about an inch shorter. And I guess that's what you get for not staying up on what part fits what. I guess it's because those coil packs on those guys sit on the valve covers instead of sitting on a stand or something. But no big deal. I got back online and ordered the truck ones. And it looks like we're good. Now we have one spark plug wire that I'll have to kind of manipulate. It's uh, the one in the very back of my custom built um, robber, my manifold, so that it'll, I think I'll have to, I, I ordered some 90s, some MSD 90s, and I got like four of them. No, I, <laughs> it showed up on eBay and it was like, uh, you know, here's your shit, here's your shit, and basically someone had bought a V8 kit, uh, broke it in half and just, you know, set like half, so, which I find, I don't hate on anybody that is industrious, industriousness, so, props to that guy. <laughs> Alright, this is undone, this is just a, did I put a clamp on it? I finally broke down and ordered a proper under hood light. Not so much for me because I would just suffer through it, but for you guys because I was watching my videos and it's really dark underneath my hood and you guys can't really see much of what's going on. So hopefully that will help you out. Buddy sent me this this whole bracket and alternator and power steering pump. It's pretty cool. Dick Ham, Richie Ham, 
he's out of Arizona. And uh, just a nice guy, man. He's always doing cool stuff. But I just reached out, man, and I was like, yo, dog, do you got one of these things? Like, yeah, man. And I said, well, let me know how much. And uh, he just mailed it to me, so that's pretty cool. I appreciate that. There are really good people out in the popular community. And I'm not saying that everything needs to be free, that's not, not at all where I'm going with that, but I've had lots of good experiences oh, over the years. All right. So, <laughs> so let me show you what we got. All right, so for some reason, I'm sure people know, just not me, because I don't fucking pay attention. Uh, on these cans, they got two, two little ports, one there and one in the middle. Now, I thought that it might have been a vacuum port or something, but it turns out that's not what it is. It's almost like two returns. Or something. I'm not really sure what it is or why it works, but it is what it is. So <laughs> I gotta quit saying that. People, I guess, just dread that saying. So this guy here, where are we at? Um, so this guy here needs to be. Uh, it it gets a, a fitting, and this guy over here is gonna be my return. But this guy here, we gotta do something about. So we gotta handle that. What do you guys want to do? What do you think we should do? Think we should just weld it? It's gonna be all kinds of shit in there, man. It's gonna wanna look like crap. I can try to fucking burn the fuck out of it. And then just zip it with the tiggy torch, you think? I don't know. You guys stay put, I'll be back. It'll be fixed when, when I get back. Okay, well, it's fabricator problems. Like I was telling you before, that you think like a fabricator. It's like if, it's the old saying: if your only uh, hammer, if your only tool is a hammer, then everything starts to look like a nail, right? So if you're a fabricator, then everything looks like a fabrication issue to you. So anyway, what we did is we just went back there and we heated that sucker up like the temperature of the sun until it was gleaming red hot and we wire brushed it and then we heated it up again until it was gleaming red hot and we wire brushed it and then we heated it up one more time and then we just went in there and fused welded it onto itself so just zapped it a few times with the TIG torch just kind of let it melt onto itself so now we have all the ports we need all cleaned up and ready and the ones we don't need are sealed up so we're ready to go on to the next step So everything is uh, good to go on the power steering pump. And uh, now we just gotta zip it back in there. I guess I can check these bolts real quick on this water pump one more time. Oh, since it's easy access for right here. And the goddamn brackets out of the way. And oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, okay, our steam ports. Yeah, okay. More doesn't hurt. Alright, well, that is looking good. This guy's So you use this bung here, and these guys down here, yeah, and they just adapt so they go from. Uh, you know, from the metric one on the ham can to the standard ones on the pump, all to AN6, and then you just use the AN6 line and.
alternator supposed to plug in but we'll fix that we'll get to that how that saying go we will burn that bridge when we get there good 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 these guys so I will check to see if I can find a bolt for that last that last hole in the bottom of the bracket I'm not terribly concerned about it but let me show you what we did with the uh, power stream pump now Let me show you what cool stuff we did inside the engine bay. All right, so we got that guy mounted back in there. We got that uh, the power strain pump deal all mounted back in there. The bolts are all tightened up. We went ahead and snugged down all the AN fittings. This is line we just kind of looped up and around. And I know it's hard to see, but there's actually quite a bit of, I can get a good finger in between that line there and the suspension on the a-arm and here is our we'll, we'll zip tie this guy over and it will just come right up and feed our turbo right around meow so that's good so these are all all wins all wins minor setbacks a little broken tap we'll have to get the new one ordered because that's one of my favorites but uh, other than that, that's not too bad. Let's, uh, we'll get it up in the air. Okay, so um, couldn't find a bolt for the bottom of the alternator. Don't really care. We'll just keep an ear out and see if we hear it. It seems like that should be enough um, for what it's got going on. So you could hear my hands are disgusting. So I think I'm gonna go wash my hands and we might start on installing the Siemens Deca 80 uh, into the intake manifold. I hope that was mostly coherent. We basically just took the alternator bracket out. The back of the uh, pump was, there was two ports. I don't know, GM things. So uh, you saw I just clipped one. I took it back in my shop. What you didn't see is I, I took it back in my welding area and I took my map gas to it and I got that fitting just like like glow in the dark, like gleaming red hot. Uh, and the idea there is to burn all the impurities off the metal because with especially with a TIG torch, it will just it just causes havoc if there's anything other than metal to weld there. So I just torched it up till it was gleaming red hot, brushed it, torched it again. And then I just kind of basically ran op over the opening with the uh, TIG torch. When I did, that it welded really well, which is always, you know, it's welding mystery metal. You never really know what's going to happen. So I just basically low amps, maybe, you know, 50, 60 uh, amps, uh, and just kind of pedaled it and just kind of melted it onto itself. And that worked really well. It actually sealed that up very well. So uh, then the rest of it was just, you know, finding the, the pieces of parts, those uh and fittings for this old GM pump. It's available. A guy did a YouTube video, so if you just like search around YouTube for you know old GM G body maybe uh, power steering to LS truck swap or something like that, it had all the information on there. Very useful uh, video the guy did. Uh, what well, definitely want to give him credit. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and we're making progress on my Phoenix. Uh, be looking forward to getting my uh, ceramic coated parts back. And uh, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Mike with Monkey Fab, out.